what I want to start with is just a few slides here to kind of set the stage, talk about what's happened over the past year, you know, uh, the work has taken place, and then really use that to kind of set up a conversation. I want to go through this pretty quickly because I really want to hear from the UC San Diego team mostly. So we've got some questions to go through. We'll ask some questions. It'll be sort of an interview style webinar panel discussion. <clears throat> and then we'll have some time at the end as well. Uh, if the questions we answered or asked uh, don't get to you know, the objectives that you're hoping to get out of this particular webinar, we'll make sure that we have time to cover that at the end. So uh, first things first, uh, you know, I've um, in various roles probably over the past six years or so, dating back to my time with uh, ScaleFunder even, um, have been following the UC San Diego program. And it, it is, you know, absolutely true to say over the years, this has been a, a really lead position in the digital landscape. Um, if you look at the CrowdSurf program, which um, I'm not even going to guess exactly when that was launched. I know it's been going for several years and it really is one of the world's best crowdfunding programs. So, you know, Knowing that we have this opportunity to work together again and knowing that there was such a strong base built around CrowdSurf around the Giving Day, I think it was first called You Give in 2019, pivoted to You Care, which is what it is now, the You Care Giving Day, really strong established Giving Day. A lot of things are going really well at the University of California, San Diego in terms of digital engagement uh, and you know continue to go very well. So. You know, when <clears throat> leadership, uh, particular in particular on this call, uh, Cheryl Harrelson, Taria Irwin, made the decision that, you know, they needed to move away from the traditional phone program. Um, you know, they had a, a strong phone program over the years, but as the industry has seen, you know, there were challenges being faced with all phone programs everywhere. And, you know, we got to talking and, and developed the student engagement team concepts. The student engagement team is something that, you know, first name I've been working on for quite some time. Um, you know, I'm, by the way, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Justin Ware with first name, co-founder and uh, chief consulting officer at first name. We're very closely tied to BWF. So BWF is, you know, essentially almost one and the same in the way that we work and in the way the companies function. And student engagement team is a big part of our focus. We've been working on this concept for several years. Uh, more and more institutions are taking it on, are sort of reinventing annual giving. And one of the very first to do that was the UC San Diego annual giving team. So the idea was we, we had to go in and if we're not going to have a phone program, we have to have something that replaces those dollars donors. We also want to elevate other channels. Uh, we want to look at things like leadership annual giving, direct mail. Um, how can this be really a true multi-channel program that, uh, you know, hopefully raises everything that it touches. Um, and, you know, some of that, again, underway in year one and a big year number two coming up to really see some of those other areas grow. But again, right away, we were tasked with, you know, helping to really elevate some of those digital channels to, to really realize more of their full potential. Um, you know, especially coming out of the pandemic and all of the ups and downs and, you know, that we faced with that, having this program with students leading the charge. And that's exactly it. So the UC San Diego annual giving team and first name work together to build this program, to hire students, to train them, to coach them, to lead them on a daily basis, to work towards replacing donors and dollars lost through the phone program. And, you know, the first opportunity, first real opportunity probably was the You Care Giving Day. I mean, we were doing content, warming audiences throughout the year, but really kind of aiming towards that end goal. And the way we like to approach that is through journey-based donor engagement. Um, you know, at first name, we have a hashtag, no cold asks. We want to get as many people as possible uh, familiar with what it is that we're doing. So, you know, number one is producing a ton of content. And the student engagement team allows us to do that. More than one new video per week during the academic year, authentic, really highly engaging, that sincere content that we always hear about, all those buzzwords about realness and authenticity. The students are fantastic at delivering that. Uh, and content that still looks good, that, that doesn't mean that it's amateurish. It, it looks like really solid content. And you know, we, we've seen across many institutions really good interaction with that content. Part of it is making sure that when we're producing all that content, it's reaching the alumni audiences. And that's what we were looking at starting in about, I think maybe February or March of this year, building plans to be sure through paid uh, social media, organic social media, email, text message, that we're able to reach alumni and help them understand what you care is. So you care giving day. This is the third year for you care. Again, really strong base, really well established, but you know, you still have a, a significant number of alumni who probably need to really understand what it is. So education around what it is, helping them see their role in the event, which of course is making a gift. 
we had this continuum you know, awareness consideration intent conversion stewardship we want to first help the audience understand what's coming it's a giving day we want to help them understand their role in it making a gift we want to help them understand how giving to something like a giving day impacts the institution improves the institution and if you do that with enough really good content well enough in advance and you're hitting them across social media across email across text message you're really warming that audience so that when the conversion point comes the giving day they're much more likely to convert across anything really but most specifically across a digital channel or digital giving day so that was the objective the giving day took place on may 13th and 14th and obviously a giving day is a comprehensive institution-wide effort so we had online ambassadors we had staff were reaching out we had tons of email and copy being written we had involvement from the chancellor which is a wonderful gift to have uh, during a giving day effort like this and the student engagement team of course was a part of that overall equation leading to the giving day and the giving day went extraordinarily well i mean if you look at the numbers uh absolutely by many factors of x you know uh the biggest giving day uh, in uc san diego's history again with all of those different pieces all those different teams working together driving towards that goal <clears throat> so we had the the lead up that was the journey-based approach that was warming uh the audiences and we'll talk a little bit more about the performance of that in, in just a bit but you know during the giving day uh, another way that we can work you know, with students is to get them active thanking people um, we had, you know, agile content, students were wonderful, produced more than 60 videos uh, throughout the 32 hours, and then working with the UC San Diego annual giving team to find the right donor. So a donor of $1,000 or more comes in, someone pulls the data out of the platform, I think that might have been Sean who's on the call was doing that piece of it. We had, you know, Nate and, and, and Jennifer working on the emails uh, to get those emails out to package it, to package that video content. And really wonderful anecdotal results from this. Gifts were already in, but the response from donors who got this real time, hyper personalized stewardship. Every video included the donor's name, mentioned the fund they supported, talked a little bit about what that fund does. Really simple 60, 30, 60 second videos, but went a long way in terms of really you know, doing that immediate stewardship. We also, you know, something that we do a lot of giving days with the student engagement team is. As you're going through the giving day and you're watching your email, you can track people who are opening but have not yet given. And if you create a specific video for that group that really kind of gets at where they're at in terms of behavior, we can hopefully drive a lot more activity. And I know, uh, I think the last three hours, something like a gift a minute was coming in. It was pretty wild uh, how fast that activity um, did pick up towards the end to really kind of accentuate that sort of U-shaped curve that we see with a lot of giving days. Uh, thank you videos, recap videos. So. The students were really, really active uh, during the giving day and really supporting a lot of the annual uh, annual giving efforts and the annual giving team was doing a wonderful job packaging it and you know, delivering these personalized content to the right individuals. So a nice lift there. You know, the one thing that we like to look at and one of the reasons why we encourage everybody to number one, think about journey based donor engagement, uh, you know, to number two, think about video and to number three, thinking about Think about really positioning students in those videos so we're looking at the set content and you know this is this is the number of one minute plus video views which is pretty much a complete video view most of these are about 60 seconds right so looking at the one minute plus video views we had the student engagement team concept generated almost three thousand of those really impactful engagements when you look at other video content there was only 54 uh, 54 views of one minute or longer and that really is pretty significant. It really helps, you know, helps again. Are they clicking give now through that through that particular video? Not necessarily. Uh, in some cases, you know, you can track that activity towards the actual giving day, but they're really paying attention to that authentic, sincere, student-generated content. That's what really captures people's attention, you know, as is evidenced here uh, at a rate, you know, 54 times what content that we typically produce would send out. Um, this is the reason why, uh, as a firm, we don't do very much video production. Uh, we usually like to get out of the way and just guide the students, train the students, put a program together where students are frequently active, make sure it aligns with philanthropic priorities. And, and the reason why this stat's so important is because of this that we've been tracking for a long time. 57% of everybody who watches a nonprofit's video to completion will go on to make a gift to that nonprofit. So any way that we can capture people's attention, get them to actually watch through to the end of the video is a very, very valuable exercise. So again, uh, one part of a big puzzle, you know, there was a very robust online ambassador program, fantastic email program. There was direct mail. There was giving days are campus wide efforts. They certainly are. Um, and, and we're, you know, we're very proud to have been a small part of it with the student engagement teamwork that was taking place. So, uh, 
this is the trend. We're seeing it. Uh, lots of institutions are replacing phone programs with student engagement team programs. And I know a lot of you probably have questions. So I'm going to introduce our panel here today and we'll get right into those questions. So we're joined by Cheryl Har Harrelson, Associate Vice Chancellor, Alumni Career and Annual Giving, Taria Irwin, Executive Director of Annual Giving, and Sean Harding, Digital Engagement and Social Fundraiser and Annual Giving. Everyone, of course, played a role in the UCARE success. And I'm thrilled to be able to introduce this team today. And I'm going to go ahead, stop the screen share here, and we can go ahead and get right into our questions. Again, don't hesitate, whether Q&A or chat, if you want to ask your own questions at any point, <clears throat> we'll get to them towards the end of the, the webinar here. Uh, but I'll go ahead and dig into the prepared questions. And the first one, uh, Cheryl, I'd like to ask you, because again, this is you know your leadership that really led to UC San Diego building you know, this student engagement team effort. So. Tell me about that decision to move away from phone to a more digitally focused program. What went into that? What was the thought process like? Good morning and thank you, Justin, for having us today. Uh, we are pleased to be with you and uh, thank you for everyone who's joining. Um, I would say for us, it was relatively simple um, I have been a phone customer for over two decades uh, in various capacities. And unfortunately at UC San Diego, what we saw was a great amount of participation uh, dropping off from the phone. Uh, many of us have seen this over the years and we knew that we had to do something um, because we were sort of bleeding. We could acquire donors, uh, but we were losing money um, you know, year after year. So at that time, it, we are currently in, a, in the last year of our campaign. Uh, we are a BWF client and was working very closely uh, with Chris Clark at BWF, um, who drew our attention to the first name product. Um, so we reviewed it. We felt this would be a great way uh, to scale our, our program and be additive in our program. So even though we are a large complex uh, institution and we have a good deal of staff, I would say this would even be something for the one shop person um, because it is a way to use students to scale and be able to get information out digitally. Yeah, absolutely. A very scalable program, and especially like you mentioned for a resource strap program, this can be one, one solution for sure. Um, when advocating for the program uh, internally, you know, I mean, obviously in higher education, we want to have a team approach and we want people on board. So what was the initial pushback, if any, uh, and, you know, how, how did you overcome that and really advocate for this program to be able to launch the program? Sure. So I, I will also share this with uh, Taria Irwin because we had two layers uh, that we had to deal with. So I, it, of course, it was close to pandemic and the plant pandemic and my budget was cut. So I had to figure out ways to uh, slim the budget. Um, so when I brought this to the chancellor's attention, whom I actually report to, um, he, he was all in, um, you know, because it was going to save us dollars. But he loved the idea of using the students um, to be able to tell the story. So working with top leadership of the university was an easy sell. I was probably the one that was most skeptical in letting the phone go. I wanted to do a parallel thing, uh, but with the pandemic, I had to um, absolutely let it go. We probably had more pushback um, at the mid level. And I will let Taria talk a little bit about that. Yes, hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Taria Irwin here from UC San Diego and Annual Given. So Cheryl said that she was probably the most skeptical. I will probably say I was the most nervous uh, because in as much as, you know, she had gotten clearance and, you know, uh, a green thumb from uh, the chancellor when she brought it to me, I was, I was like, okay, so, you know, how are we going to be able to make this work? So, you know, uh, the fact that we had been 
a client for the phone program we actually had on site a uh, location for our calling of uh, students students and uh, we we had a personal relationship with them uh, that was you know also an, uh, something that we sort of had to work through uh, when we actually hit that pandemic um, then we had already started talking about how we could do things more digitally and since we couldn't do anything with the calling program remotely, this was really the time for us to do it. And um, I keep saying time because it, the timing was really just right for us. Uh, Cheryl had already indicated that, you know, our numbers were dropping um, related to the call uh, program, and we needed to find a way to, to redeem those, those numbers. Um, so, related to the the pushback and the challenges that were faced there it was it was really uh, something that i had to work through myself and then work with my team to actually get going and then actually getting the program up and started and thanks to the fact that we already had chris Carr uh, on board helping us he was a big factor in helping us uh, work through uh getting getting this launched so <clears throat> we're launched then and this is uh, probably more directly for Taria and Sean, we're launched and we're rolling. You know, what What were some of the challenges that came up as, as we were growing this program that we had to overcome and how did we overcome those? So more is challenges and some obstacles and, and some things that, you know, we had to go back to the table and rethink. Uh, we had an idea that it was going to be a bit more simple for us to be able to hire the students uh, to be involved, uh, to be our student workers to, to get this going. Uh, things jumped off pretty quickly, uh, but then things slowed down. And then because once again, you know, we were in that uh, transition mode from the pandemic, getting those students involved and able to keep in them. Uh, we had students who were taking their classes uh, on campus who had to switch to online. So that was a challenge, you know, their motivation, their time spent trying to adjust uh, to their new educational life. Uh, but um, then there we had things, we had to work with um, our campaign team uh, to uh, get things um, started and get a presence, a physical presence of, for the phone program on our campaign uh, website so that people knew that it was legitimate and when they were going to be receiving all the text messages and of the videos from the students, it was legitimately UC San Diego Tritons that were reaching out to them. Sean, did you have anything you wanna add? Yeah, no, thanks Justin for having me, Sean Harding. Uh, I'm our digital engagement and social fundraiser. And I, I actually joined UC San Diego around four months ago, right before you care our giving day. So program had already started, but yeah, I would just say our, our main challenge was the student retention part. Um, obviously hiring and training are so key to creating a successful program. Um, but for me, sort of moving into next year, I'd really like to hire students that are freshmen and sophomores um, and hopefully have them for multi years and, and have them till they're seniors and graduating. Um, Right now we're currently in the interview process, but yeah, I, I think it's it's just getting those students hired and making it a point to get good students in. So Justin, hopefully where we're looking at 10 students for next year uh, to have on board. And, and that's really my big, uh, big thing to overcome from first from the first year. So, you know, as yes. things leveled, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just wanted to ensure that I point out to everyone a lesson learned uh, that Taria talked about in this first year. If you are going to launch first name, um, ensure that you get up on your website, in your alumni newsletters, similar to what we used to do with the phone program. We used to send a postcard years ago and say, we're gonna be calling you during this season, um, letting people know that you have launched this program, that they're going to receive text messages, 
um, because all over campus from our health system uh, to our, our privacy officers, they got calls and saying, is this really legitimate? With all the robocalls and things like that, it is crucially important um, to get a campaign out there to say, you're doing something new. Um, you're going to be receiving texts. You may even want to name the students. You might want to uh, put something, uh, pictures up so that they know they're gonna get videos or put the videos up. Um, but that is a crucial lesson learned for us for the first year. Yeah, and I think Sharon, you probably were talking about internal and external in terms of communication. Yeah, and, and just to that point, uh, Justin, um, one of the other things that needs to be considered is the fact where is your institution with their fundraising, especially on a higher level, especially if they're in a campaign, okay? Because um, definitely your communications team, your marketing team, they're always uh, really concerned about uh, the presence, uh, the appearance of adding new things into uh, the fundraising uh, uh, strategy. And for a program like First May, working with the students directly, we had to really uh, push to get them to understand that we don't, we did not want the students to have that formal look, feel of the institution. We wanted it to be something organic, something grassroots, something that a student would say, a look that the student would have. I mean, not in not in shirt and tie but they're wearing UC San Diego gear and they look like they were either going to class or coming from class. So that, that was another uh, challenge that we had to make them understand. No, it is, it is not formal. We are not using the same kind of terminology in our words or sentences that we would do in a regular campaign. We needed to be a student, vo a student voice, a student sound and a student look. Absolutely. I think so one of the, the greatest value points of this is the authenticity of the message. We see it resonate so well with audiences. So that awesome to, that authenticity, uh, how did it pay off? I mean, what were some of the wins? What were some of the successes that we saw in the first year of this program? I guess this cue for me, huh? Tari, you want to go? Yes, let me go. <laughs> This, one of the successes I would, I would say is it did give us an opportunity to switch our gears and to look into doing a program that was more on the digital uh, uh, and video portion. I think had we had the call center uh, and it was running strong, we probably would, we, we were sort of switching to texting but I don't think we would have been really forced to start doing the video digital part. And we have received responses from people. Oh, I got your video. Thank you so much. I like, they, they liked it and they enjoyed it. We have seen our, um, it, it has been um, an opportunity for the students to work within particular units like our colleges, but we're seeing um, you know, dollars raised from the student gift officer program. Uh, and so that's, that's my input and I'll pass it on back to Cheryl. Sean, I think, do you wanna go first or? Yeah, I, I just think, um, I mean, obviously I, I got here towards the end of the program, but um, like Taria said, I, I think having our students create videos um, that are being seen by our alumni and, and donors um, across the world is awesome. And, and to the digital point, um, we're moving towards that direction, moving away from the call center. People aren't picking up their phones and answering a call. Um, so I think us moving towards the digital part is so important. And I, I just love getting a video from a student and hearing directly directly from them 
um, and asking them to give to their respective college or, or whatever uh, we're pro promoting at the time. But I just think it's so important now that we're moving to the digital world that these videos are getting out to our alumni and we've been really able to personalize them as Justin said during UCARE. Um, and, and that just provides uh, some another stewardship piece to it as well. So I, I think that's important and I'm really looking forward to year two um, as I get to sort of lead the team and, and see where we go from there. I would just say the authenticity of the videos. We've done a number of videos that we've sent out and uh, they're staged, you know, you write a script to them um, but the authenticity of the students walking across campus, uh, talking about various things that are happening on campus, I think is what the alumni audience want. And we specifically focused in on, we have an engagement score for every alum on campus. We specifically focused on that middle range, the people who were twos and threes, each student got about a thousand in their portfolio. Um, you know, so they're engaging these folks in their portfolio, but then we were able to also do videos that the wider alumni audience would have. Um, so I think it has helped our retention, um, you know, in showing the impact of what we're doing. Uh, it has drawn people in as, as you talked in the, uh, slide presentation, the number of hits that we've gotten on our social programming and people taking a look. Uh, we are doing some acquiring, um, but, you know, not, not as strong as I yet want it to be, but I'm expecting that in year two. Um, but it has really engaged. So we ended with more dollars this year uh, retention, even though we may not have ended with more donors uh, still in this pandemic. Justin, I got, I got one more thing too. I'll just say that our students were great during this whole process too. We obviously had to pivot and they were creating videos in their bedrooms for Zoom. And I'm just really looking forward to having them on campus and getting to work with them on a day-to-day -day basis. But our students were really great with obviously the pandemic and um, having to create videos in their bedrooms and putting up a UC San Diego poster behind them. But um, I think without their help too, this wouldn't have been the success that we had for sure. The students were incredible, uh, continue to be incredible, you know. I think you mentioned, Sean, the retention piece of the students themselves. Unfortunately, I think we have two or three coming back for a second year, and <clears throat> that's really important because with that authenticity, you also want to build that familiarity uh, with the alumni base. So, um, so yes, students are, I mean, they're everything. They're, they're, they're the core of this program. Um, Sean, question specifically for you on, on social media engagement. Very important for a number of reasons uh, to really kind of be able to quantify that. And, you know, what, uh, what, what have the students done with this content, this authentic content in terms of elevating the social media presence with alumni at UC San Diego? Yeah, well, like I said before, we're, we're creating videos that are getting sent out and seen um, by our, our alumni and donors across the world, which is incredible. Um, and I'll, I'll just speak to specifically for UCARE. Um, we were able to create over 100 videos that, that led up to the day and, and really during our 32 hour giving period, um, which we call UCARE. So I, I think we, we had a great team from Zach and Mari um, that helped lead the charge, but we really took advantage of paid ads on Facebook and Instagram. And I think people that are leaning into this program that they should definitely allocate a budget for digital ads, um, you know, whether it be a couple thousand dollars at least. But um, I think that's a really big piece to this is, is using those digital ads to get the videos out more. Um, and then also just collaborating with other departments and areas on campus to promote the videos as well. 
Um, we were able to use uh, our campus social media team. I would send them the videos. Those would get out on their channels to be posted elsewhere. Um, and then creating a hashtag, we use the hashtag UCSD cares. So we're able to track all of that information. Um, and we also um, used Sprout Social as well too, to sort of see those numbers at the end of the day. But yeah, I'll just conclude with, I think, to the student piece, it really hits at the heartstrings when you get a video from them and, and when you see it. So um, it, I'm more willing to give if I see this video from a student and um, I, I'm just excited for what we have in store here. But um, like I said, just take advantage of those digital ads, um, work with your teams on, on campus to get it out um, and it should be successful. Awesome. And kind of a segue off of that, I'm going to go ahead, answer a couple of the Q&As from the audience here. <clears throat> In each case, what I think I'll do is I'll look at it sort of program wide and answer it based on all of our student engagement team programs. And then I'll pause and let UC San Diego jump in and talk specifically about the student storytellers program in San Diego. So the, the first question that was kind of brought me to this was, you know, for paid social, how do you segment your posts to reach your audience? And, you know, that for each campaign, it's different, of course, but generally speaking, you know, we were looking at Facebook and then, of course, Instagram at the same time to target alumni. If that was our objective is to really pinpoint alumni because we wanted to grow alumni giving. Um, Sean, uh, Tria, Cheryl, anything else to say on the segmentation piece? I mean, again, different for each, but, you know, focus on segmenting or targeting alumni. And of course you can do it, you can go by age, you can go by you know, geographic location, but for us it really was just alumni, I think. So one of, one of the areas we also are trying to grow within the alumni uh, segment is our uh, goal program, which is the graduates of the last decade. And so we can see using, because it, with, with video and with, the fact that you can do something instantly with video, uh, being able to do something particularly to that age group or that segment uh, is definitely a plus uh, with uh, using first name. You can talk to them differently. You can use some buzzwords that they would be familiar with. Uh, you know, cool is, is a word for me and my, and my generation. I don't know what the new word is for uh, the last decade, but I don't think it's cool anymore. So, you know, things of that nature. Yeah, I think chuggy is the word I hear going around these days. I think that's, that, that's the new one, right? <clears throat> um, another question about using students to push out messaging and, and how many we're hoping to hire, a really good one. So I think, Sean, you mentioned 10 is the goal. I, I think that that's pretty consistent, about 10 to 12. We've seen a lot of success with six at places like Stony Brook University. So we've seen some smaller teams be effective, but I, I do like that 10 to 12 number. I think that's great. And then when it comes to pushing out messaging, you know, part of the reason why we want authentic students coming for authentic content coming from the same students over time is to establish that familiarity. So when you get a text message, you might recognize that name. When you see that in your inbox, you might open that email because plenty of studies will show that if you recognize a sender in email, the open rates are considerably higher. So, so I mean, obviously students aren't the only ones pushing out messaging. We have a lot of messaging coming from a lot of different sources around campus, but specific to this program, if it's SET content, it is whether it's through social media, text message, email, whenever possible, we like to have the student's name as the sender, even if they're not actually pushing it out. Now, if you go into actual student gift officer work, where we have some programs where students actually have a portfolio and they're doing one-to-one -one engagement with donors, in that case, uh, then, then they're quite literally sending it out and actually interacting and you know, having everything from Zoom calls to Facebook chats to what have you uh, with um, donors and prospects. Uh, anything else on the messaging piece uh, you'd want to mention in terms of how we're delivering? Next one up uh, is uh, how how do we use the videos for ongoing warming and engagement uh, outside of the the UCARE campaign? So I think maybe get to that in just a bit when we talk about um, when we talk about growth for the program and where we're heading. So I'm going to head back to our pre-planned questions. I see a couple more on there. We'll get to those in just a bit. Uh, I just want to make sure that we get through the questions here. This is for everybody, and again, this kind of gets to year two, I think. Um, 
What do we have in store for the Student Storytellers Program at UC San Diego? Let me let me try to okay. start with this one. <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not going to put you on on the spot. You can jump in. <laughs> but since we this is our first year, okay, and we had hiccups with our first year. I foresee that we will move forward with the same strategy that we originally started with, because one of the things that we see important is making sure we have created at least some consistent movements so that we can track to see how well we're doing with what we with what we already created. Um, we talked about the fact that you know the hiring of the hiring process of the students, uh, the number of the students that we. Uh, would uh, be bringing on uh, to the team uh, the hours that they are required to work, which is up to 10 hours, and uh, how we are going to be utilizing them throughout the year. Uh, I, I, I want to make sure that people understand that we have not just used the student storytellers for our giving day. We have been using the student storytellers through our giving strategy for the entire year. And we will continue uh, to do that uh, in that uh, way and fashion. Cheryl, did you have something you wanted to add to this? I, I would just add that for my expectation uh, for the year is uh, integrating them, like Taria said, throughout the strategy. Um, so it's engaging and warming. It may be sending out a message, you know, doing something exciting for homecoming uh, that's only three years old at our university. It, it may be incorporated into Giving Tuesday, the You Care campaigns, but also our other um, holistic multi channel pieces. So, you know, we all throughout the year, we're doing academic pieces, pieces for our colleges. And just so you all know, um, colleges are very different than most people think of them. We are modeled after Oxford and Cambridge, where the college system is where you live and, and, and do your initial learning courses. Then you go into academic divisions. Um, so we have sort of two competing priorities. We are provosts, they want fundraising for the colleges. The deans want uh, fundraising for the academic units. So while we've done a lot around the academic units, these students focus on the colleges and the activities of the colleges. Um, so they will be used from July 1 to June 30th. I, I saw someone ask a question about the number of hours. They work about 10 to 12 hours a week. Um, but they could go up to 20 based on their time factor, what we have available. But we are also going to try to teach these students how to become fundraisers, how to work within advancement. This is our pipeline um, as well. So we are going to train them uh, to work with us as we have done with other students from the phone and those that we have within our office. Sean? Yeah, among the things that Taria and Cheryl already mentioned, I think it just starts with creating great content and working with Justin and Zach and Mari from First Name and really leaning into that authenticity part that we keep hitting on. Uh, quick hitting videos that are approachable and really just using the students to tell the story. That's, that's what I wanna start with and then we really have a great program plan that Cheryl mentioned uh, with a, our Triton 5K coming up in October, homecoming, giving Tuesday, calendar year end, um, and then in May when we have our UCARE day again. So I think using them throughout the whole entire year to create videos is going to be so important for us in year two. Um, and not only creating videos for social media, but for our CrowdSurf platform, uh, for email, for social media. And then also we just moved over to a new texting platform. So I'm really interested in seeing how we can utilize the students for that. Um, but yeah, we, we're hitting our donors in, in so many different areas. And um, I'd also love 
just to tell the whole university if they don't know about the student storyteller program, hey, this is what we're doing. Uh, I talked to Justin already about having uh, a couple of our students present at an all staff meeting. So I just would love to get it out more that this is what we're doing and, and how can we help other departments as well. Awesome, that's fantastic. And yeah, that, the, the student gift officer push where you actually, you know, they're doing early discovery cultivation work, warming mid-level audiences and allowing gift officers to be so much more successful because there are no more cold calls. You're, you're getting warm prospects out of a huge pool of prospects. That's a big, that's, a, that's definitely a trajectory. We're seeing some of that work already being done, of course, and we expect a lot of expansion there across all of our client partners uh, in the coming years. So very excited to pursue that. Uh, again, we have more questions coming in, so don't hesitate to use Q&A or chat or, or raise a hand at some point. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in just a bit. Um, but before we do, I, I wanna make sure we, you know, we ask the probably most important question. If you're thinking about doing this, what's your advice? Uh, Cheryl, I'll start, I'll start with you. What would you advise others, other institutions on if they're trying to weigh the decision? Do we do we do a student engagement team? Do we rebalance the phone? You know, do we do we take the big leap? Sure. Um, so I would remind everyone um, as, as you like you thought about phone, this is one piece of the puzzle. So it's, you have to include it in the whole pie. And one of the things that happened with us is we got caught up in Stuart, student storytellers and direct mail and those sort of things using them separately. And we had to come back together and say, no, this is a piece of the pie. So how do we use it within our whole story? Um, getting the video out, then the direct mail piece, then the email or what have you, um, you know, the social pieces, all telling the same stories so that people are focused on what you want them to focus on. If it's student support and success, they understand that message through multiple pieces. So um, look at this as a holistic piece of the pie, not just a um, separate piece. And that's why we're using it for engagement throughout the year, whether it's homecoming, class reunion. Um, in in uh, February, we celebrate uh, Black History Month. We celebrate Hispanic uh, His History Month. We do Chinese New Year. We're going to do a Diwali celebration this year. So we will be using our student storytellers to engage our alumni um, and maybe even some community and friends with that. It is a part of the puzzle. I know someone asked about the cost. Um, for me, I don't know how much is it per person or looking because I don't look at it like that. I look at all of the channels together look at my budget, and then how much we bring in in terms of annual giving. And so that's what the chancellor wants to know. What's the bottom line number? Are we still in the black? Because we know the annual giving dollar is the most expensive dollar to raise. And you know, are we engaging more people? We are only 60 years old as an institution. And long ago, we didn't treat our alumni as well. We would say goodbye. And so we are trying to fix that. We're trying that to help them understand this is their home. You know, it's home away from home. And we want them to be engaged, not just with money. Of course, money is a factor, but with uh, time and talent, mentoring students, uh, connecting on campus, that sort of thing. So this is a part of our overall alumni uh, and annual giving program, as well as uh, other pieces that we have. So yeah, I, I can follow up to, uh, you know, Cheryl, you mentioned real quickly the cost benefit ratio of this program. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out of UC San Diego and speak about our programs overall here and what we're seeing. And it's it's a lot of good results across the board, not just at UC San Diego, but other places. We've seen, again, many factors go into this. So I don't wanna suggest this is only SET at these other institutions either, 
but we've seen participation rates double, like quite literally alumni participation rates double uh, over four year spans. We've seen when it comes to actual fundraising channels, so now we're not, we're not just talking about engagement here, we're talking about driving dollars and donors. Uh, this, this one comes, it's, it's in the case study from Stony Brook. So a three to one increase over all their channels, uh, mail, phone, what have you, you know, when we have the student video driven emails that outperforms every other channel uh, at places like, like Stony Brook in that particular case. If you look at this like a fully managed phone program, so you are outsourcing your digital engagement, which is uh, how we would how we would like to look at it. So if you compare it to a phone program, it's usually about half the cost of an outsourced phone program. It's just far more efficient. Uh, it, it's far more effective, we think. Um, but you know, in terms of your overall investment, if you're to do one or the other, or perhaps right size a phone program and then add this, and you stay budget neutral, but you have both digital and you have phone, that's certainly an option too. And then you really are hitting all channels. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of the value in this program, we're seeing nothing but good things. Uh, it's again, it's, it's coming in at a lower rate than what your outsourced phone program would cost. It's delivering in a lot of cases better results, and um, yeah, we're, we're very excited to see the growth in, into the future. But yeah, that that is how we're assessing that. Uh, another question, very tactical, but a very good one. Uh, how do you? What is what does a week uh, a week in the life of a student storyteller look like? And and again, uh, I'll start wide and then have uh, you know the UC San Diego team back us up on that. But uh, video is number one thing. We we want them to be video storytellers. Now there is two different wrinkles again: student engagement team, which is what the student storytellers program has been up to this point and will continue to be, and then student gift officer work, which is where the student storytellers program is going and where a lot of other institutions are going as well. And you know for for the student engagement team, it's content, content, content. They are a content machine. They are powering all those donor journeys, all those donor journeys that could be so effective if they have a massive amount of really authentic, engaging content that could book people out of Facebook, out of Instagram, can get them to click and open an email. Uh, so the content machine. So most of it is video production. And you know, we work with them on a daily basis to do that. We have weekly meetings where we come together, put plans together, strategize. Uh, you know, we have several meetings with leadership. Now, again, with UC San Diego, the team, Sean is involved in every one of these things. Cheria is very involved in a lot of these pieces. So it's much more of a, a team effort. In other cases, we have clients that simply say, look, report back to us on a monthly basis and tell us how it's going and how it's doing. And in any case, it's students producing a lot of content being active on social media, having their name attached to emails, but really the content production is a big part of it. If it's student gift officers, then they're actually managing a portfolio. They're working a portfolio, making outreach via text message, perhaps via phone call, uh, definitely via video, uh, personalized video engagement for donors and prospects. So again, still video production is a heavy part of it, but there's more of a portfolio management piece for the student gift officers. So what have I left out, Sean, Taria, uh, Cheryl, on, on the day-to-day for the UC San Diego student storytellers. I don't think you've left out anything. I guess the only thing I would probably add is the fact that the flexibility, they have to be, you know, they have to be very flexible because as you know, when you were on campus, ideas were just popping into my head and Sean's head while you were on site as to, hey, now that we have them here, can they do X, Y, and Z so that we can, you know, get some more engagement. But, you know, uh, in fundraising, everyone knows that sometimes uh, you have to pivot to do something different at a moment's notice. And so with that, and as much as maybe, you know, the student story uh, teller's assignment was um, to be focusing on maybe the aquarium uh, for this week. Uh, it could have been a situation where, hey, it's going to be the aquarium and also maybe athletics. So being prepared to, you know, take on an additional tax and have the flexibility to do that. Yeah, Justin, I, I think you kind of hit most of the points, but I'm sort of the, the oversight and the one that's handling the program on a week to week basis. And then we bring in Taria and our writers and, and other content people to help with what's going on at the, at the moment. But I'm really looking forward to maybe having some office hours with our students, if that's possible, and bringing them in and being able to work with them together uh, on the program for this year too. 
Uh, so hopefully instead of talking over Zoom and meeting over Zoom, I, I'd be able to help them get their videos set up on campus somewhere um, if we're promoting athletics out front of the gym. But um, hopefully we'll have some office hours too coming up in this year too. Yeah, and I, you pretty much addressed it, but you know, for, for UC San Diego, there's another question there uh, from UC Riverside about who oversees you know, the, the program. And again, uh, you know, the, the model at UC San Diego, where it's a UC San Diego annual giving program, and there's, you know, Sean, you're active on a daily basis. Uh, to react pretty close to that uh, in this particular aspect of it. Others, again, look at it like a fully outsourced phone program where our team does literally everything uh, in terms of the day to day. And then we report back on a once or twice monthly basis, build a dashboard, here are the results, here's what we're seeing on social media engagement, email open rates, here's the fundraising activity, here are the plans we have coming up, here are the project plans we created, and we're simply kind of getting reviews and you know, uh, uh, signature on everything that, that we're doing there. So both and, uh, it can be a very, very collaborative you know, uh, uh, project where the institution is deeply involved in leading the program like we have at UC San Diego, it could be an entirely outsourced uh, piece where, again, we're just sort of reporting back to it on a regular basis. We have everything in between. Absolutely happy to answer that question. Uh, Justin, over, um, yeah. I'll just say that uh, not that outsourcing it is a bad thing, but this program is really important to us and really important to the success uh, for the future. So we are very hands on. This is a number one priority for me. Uh, so this is what we want to do. It's an important thing for us. Um, and not that it's a bad thing if, if you are hands off, but I think if you could find somebody to oversee it, you know, among their other job responsibilities that I think the program could benefit more if, if there's somebody that oversees it. And just and to add to that, what he said, someone to oversee it, it, it brings a different dynamic and it makes the student uh, storyteller feel really valued and really part of UC San Diego when they have someone like Sean that they will be able to connect with on a regular basis and not just, you know, here's your assignment, uh, off, <laughs> off you go, uh, complete it and, you know, uh, turn it in, uh, but, um, that that one on one, we we do want our students to understand that they are part of this annual giving team. They are not just you know a student storyteller who's working with the annual giving team. They are part of the annual giving team. Sure, you had something. Yes, I just want to add that. Um, so Sean has this as one of his responsibilities. Uh, he also manages our crowd serve. Uh, program in which I think last year we did 100 or so crowd surf uh, projects over the year. Um, so he manages that and all the email sends and things like that. So he has a pretty robust job as everyone else does on my team. Um, you know, but I can imagine in the future as we continue to grow this program, we will have um, maybe a student supervisor or two that will help Sean in managing uh, this, because as we see the goodness of this program and see that it will grow, um, I may have more students, you know, uh, to be able to reach out to alumni that's important to us. Our, our alumni board has always said, never come to the table without a student uh, to tell the story. Uh, so, you know, there's opportunity for us to grow. And um, I can see us having a student supervisor to, uh, that will work with Sean and, and help us manage uh, the program. Thank you so much. I think I saw a hand pop up. Randy, are you still on the line? I think your hand popped up earlier. Did you have a question you wanted to ask? Randy Holden from UNC Greensboro. I'm not sure if I see Randy in the attendee list anymore, so we might have lost Randy. So hopefully we can follow up with Randy after the fact. Um, going to the chat, a couple of questions in the chat. And, you know, I, I believe maybe, Cheryl, you mentioned, you know, the perhaps it was Tree, I apologize, mentioned the 
the college, the residential college is set up at, at UC San Diego. And the question here we have is, you know, are we able to really get content out for all colleges and programs? Um, maybe kind of assuming a bit, but are we aligning, uh, you know, students with colleges and programs? And um, again, what we're doing here is really more of that residential college-based approach. Is that, that correct? That's correct. Um, we have uh, now seven colleges. We will have eight uh, coming up in another year. And so because we have 10 or 12 students, we are able to assign one student per college, uh, but we are able to use those students for other types of content. Um, you know, it's what we try to do in annual giving and working with our academic units uh, and our colleges is tell us what your top two maybe three priorities are per year. Uh, don't give us a hundred priorities. Uh, so then we get to focus right in on, you know, those top two or three things. Um, again, to con have that consistent messaging with our alumni. And so they're not saying you're all over the place, uh, focus in on some things. And it's typically student support and success. So even in our, in our colleges, they do research, they provide scholar, academic scholarships um, for students who are undecided in major or what have you. Um, so it's typically the student support and success uh, categories. And then just to reinforce the ability to have a student or a group of students associated with one one particular category, one vertical, so to speak, and you know whether it's a college, whether it's a unit, whether it's your medical sciences, whether it's athletics, <clears throat> you know, I, the idea here is they become familiar with the same student. Like Sean mentioned, we really want to keep them around, hire them as a freshman or a sophomore, work with them for three or four years because that is going to work wonders on everything from your email open rates to conversions on fundraising requests to event attend whatever it might be. Um, you know, establishing that familiarity how, along whatever lines you'd like. And, you know, residential colleges make sense at UC San Diego. Others, it's unit-based. Others, it might could be alumni uh, year. Uh, you could be a class year program or something like that. So lots of ways to get creative with it. We're up at the, the top of the hour. Um, anything else from the UC San Diego team that we haven't covered yet? I don't think there's anything else other than we are happy to talk with you if you uh, want more information or want to take a look at some videos. Sean can uh, send a couple of things out. Uh, maybe we'll give you a couple of things, Justin, uh, that you can post out there uh, for people. But I, I would say that we're very happy with the program and looking forward to growing it. Cheryl, thank you so much. Taria, Sean, thank you. I, I can't thank you enough, obviously, not just for the hour today, but for your partnership and your leadership and innovation and really making this work at UC San Diego. And we can't wait to keep growing in year two. So looking forward to the partnership continuing. Uh, again, I want to thank our hosts from UC San Diego. Uh, looking forward to year two. Thanks so much, everybody.